The global reinsurance industry is once again preparing to descend upon Monte Carlo for rendezvous de septembre. And again, AM Best has prepared its annual ranking of the top 50 global reinsurers. Here to discuss some of the key developments in this year's rankings is AM Best Associate Director Scott Mangan and financial analyst Victoria Ohoranek. Victoria, Munich Re has taken back the top spot from Swiss Re after being a year at number two, but clearly these are the two dominant players in the reinsurance sector. Was this driven by growth on the part of Munich Re? Well, Munich Re has claimed the title of the world's largest reinsurer since 2010, with the exception of 2017 when the title was given to Swiss Re. Um, during 2017, uh, Munich Re reported a mid-teen growth in reinsurance premiums, which again secured the company the number one position. However, Munich Re also benefited from the appreciation of the euro against the dollar. Um, being that Munich Re reports in euros, the benefit of the positive exchange rate flows through when we convert the uh, figures from euros to dollars. It's safe to say that Munich Re and Swiss Re will probably continue to pass the first place title back and forth between each other in the near future. They do remain the industry's unrivaled front runners. Um, together, they account for approximately 30% of all reinsurance premiums written. Um, so it's, it's definitely safe to say that there's not going to be a third player penetrating the top two spots anytime soon. To what extent would you say that M&A activity had an impact on this year's rankings? Well, ongoing M&A has and will continue to have a huge impact on the top 50 ranking every year. I think a perfect example of this is Sample Holdings' dramatic increase from 46th place last year to 22nd place this year. So year-end 2017 was actually the first year that Endurance Holdings was incorporated into Sampo's financial reporting, which accounted for the dramatic increase. Um, I think it's also worth noting that last year Endurance held the 25th position, so from that perspective the rise wouldn't have been as dramatic. Um, you know, this year uh, the announcement of the acquisition of Validis and Excel by uh, AIG and AXA respectively, um, we do definitely think that this will play an impact in their ranking next year, but this is something that we definitely will uh, be curious to see how that plays out. On the other side of the coin, was there any notable downward movement as far as we were concerned? Yes, so the two companies that had the biggest downward movement were QBE and WR Berkeley. QBE reported about a 40% decrease in their reinsurance premium, which caused the company to jump 14 places down to 38 from 24. Also, WR Berkeley uh, reported a mid-teen decline in their reinsurance premiums, stemming from both the property and the casualty lines of business and this caused them to drop 248 from 41. Now, Scott, the report also includes two sub-rankings of top non-life and life reinsurance groups. Uh, does looking at lists broken out in this fashion tell you anything different about the market rankings? To some extent it does. It's, while there's a lot of overlap between the, the top four or five players in the market, it does show that there, there are players like um, Reinsurance Group of America on the life side and um, Everest, Transatlantic, uh, Partner Re, on, on, you know, the Bermuda market companies on the non-life side. And they operate in very different markets with very different dynamics, and um, we think it's important to highlight that. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Victoria. Thank you. And for AM Best TV, I'm John Weber.